Hi, welcome back to Space Rocks, the ongoing Godot game development tutorial series. In this video, we're going to add some upgrades or some, some money collecting so that we can purchase upgrades to the ship. And we're going to talk a little bit about the new Particle 2D feature in Godot 3.0. So this time around, I've added a couple of small things. I'm going to start with uh, the simplest ones, which is on the player ship, I have added two more position 2Ds. I'm calling them muzzle left and muzzle right. And the idea is that this is a potential upgrade that you can get for your ship that will allow you to do that instead. For the code, I just did this. I added a shoot to function, which just spawns two bullets. I think the, the end goal is going to be that this will become one function and we'll pass in some arguments to say how many bullets we want to fire. But I still haven't decided what all the different weapon upgrades might be. So I don't want to go too far into that until I've decided how that's going to work. So just for now, I, I'm just going to use this other function. Now, part of the reason I added that now is that I've added a, we need a, start developing the upgrade process and to do that I've created a drop object which is this little yellow star which is a very uncomplicated object it just spawns somewhere and it moves in a straight line at a, in a random direction and it uh, disappears after a certain amount of time and this is basically going to be the currency in the global I've created a drop percentage here so it has a 5% chance of dropping when an asteroid is destroyed. Uh, it'll also drop when a enemy is destroyed. So what that means is I've got a new UI up here. It's going to show you how many stars you've collected. And if we blow up some stuff here, there is our little pickup sound and our UI telling us how many stars we've collected. So those are a couple minor changes, but the main thing that I want to talk about this time around is I've been really interested in experimenting with the new Particle 2D engine in Godot 3.0, and so I thought that I would replace this little blue, simple little blue flame with something particle-based for the exhaust of our ship's engine. So what I've done is created a exhaust flame particle 2d node so i'm going to disable this one and if i run the ship scene you can see what that looks like so we have some orange fading to red particles coming out to look kind of flame like and so i want to go a little deeper into how we're doing that using the particle 2d node so let's look at some of the settings here. Uh, emitting just turns out whether it's on or off. And something you'll notice here is that because the particles are very short lived, they don't they don't last for very long. The preview here in the inspector doesn't look like what you saw in the game uh, because it's not able to actually show the whole process. It's a preview. It's a preview of the of the particle animation, so you don't see the actual final result. Now normally you will if you have a if you have slower moving particles or long, longer living particles but because I have my lifetime here set to 0.1 these particles last for a very short amount of time so it doesn't look quite like what you're gonna see in the running game. Uh, the only other thing that I've changed here uh, outside of the defaults for the particle 2D node is I've added a texture here and this texture is just a it's an animation actually it has a whole bunch of frames of a little fireball animated fireball uh, I'm not actually using the animation because for this the particles are also very small so you wouldn't be able to see them but I just added the texture here mark that it's uh, 8 by 4 frames so that it's just going to use the first frame of this and so whatever particle sheet you have might have a similar grid layout. You can just grab whichever frame you want 
that way or or actually have the particles be animated and, and running an animation as they go so that's pretty much it I've moved the location so that it's going to appear from the back of the ship and I've also uh, rotated it 180 degrees because uh, the default so the default direction that the particles come out is just going to be rearward and that is all the settings that go into the particle 2d all the magic happens all this appearance stuff happens with a process material and when you click this down arrow you can make a shader material that's if you want to write a shader to do all of your particle processing or you can add a particles material and a particles material is where you're going to set all the properties for how you want those particles to move look change over time all those kind of things and if I click on the material here you'll be able to see all of the properties that you can set now there's way too much for me to go into here. I actually am planning on doing a an in-depth tutorial that's all about how to use the particles material and how all these different settings work. Uh, but for this one, I'm just going to go briefly through and talk about the ones that I have changed to create the little flame effect. Uh, the emission shape. The default is a point. All the particles spawn at the same point. I have changed this to box so that I can could expand the Y extents a little bit so that the, the particles spawn over a small range of Y values. So it looks like they're coming out of the little back exhaust here. Um, I've set the spread to zero. Changing the spread makes the particles uh, spread out more. So they have more uh, angular spread as they come out of the emission point. Um, let's see. Gravity, I've turned off gravity. Gravity is on by default, and that's going to make all of the particles fall. We don't want that in space. Initial velocity is how fast you want those particles moving. I set this fairly high because I want it to look like flame shooting out. Um, other properties about movement, I didn't change any of. You know, what angle? Angle lets you rotate the particles themselves. Scale, I've scaled these way down, and these start out as a, a pretty uh, a large shape. So, But I've also added a scale curve, and this is something you're going to see cropping up a lot in the particles material, is allowing you to create curves that describe how a property changes over time. And so the scale curve here, if you click on it, there's this interface here for drawing this curve. And so you have your starting value and then over time and this this is from the beginning to the end of the lifetime whatever the lifetime is I have the particle starting out zero really rapidly becoming large and then shrinking down again like they're fading away and you can grab these points and adjust them and it'll change what happens and you can grab these little handles to change the shape of the curve and so you can get a lot of different effects that way. What else did we do here? So we have our scale changing. We also have a color, a color ramp. And if you've used the color ramp in Godot 2, it works pretty much the same way. I'm starting out at the white, the natural color, and slowly uh, transitioning to red so it looks like the flame particles are cooling as they get farther away from the engine and then uh, if if you have some animation to happen if you have animated particles this is where you would set those I don't have any of that happening that is essentially how I got this flame effect and there's obviously a lot of different things you could do once you start playing around with it I highly encourage you just create a particle node and experiment with all the settings. It's the best way to get a feel for what each of them does and how they combine. And the possibilities are really pretty limitless. Once you have your particle 2D in the code, all we're doing is that instead of uh, when we, oops, look at the player script, instead of when we, 
when we thrust showing and hiding that sprite, we're going to set emitting to true or emitting to false on the particle 2D node. And then I also added a sound called the thrust sound. We want to stop it when we let go of the key. But when we hit play, we don't want to, or when we hit up arrow and thrust, we don't want to start playing because then every frame it would restart playing the sound. It would sound very, very bad. So if it's not playing, we play it. So that way on the subsequent frames, if it's already playing, it lets it keep going. And so you just want to use a, a sound that can loop so that it sounds like it keeps going as it, uh, as it repeats. All right, that's all the changes so far. Uh, the next video we're going to start adding the UI for the upgrade screen so that after a after a wave finishes the upgrade screen will pop up and you'll be able to see how much money you have and what things you can buy to upgrade all those different uh, options on your ship and maybe we'll come up with a few more along the way. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.